then you start to race and your mind gets angry. As you start pulling the daggers out of the back that you have it, you're getting ticked off because how dare they betray me? How dare they wound me? I've never done anything but good to them. This is all the emotions of rejection. And then sadly enough, it comes around full, full circle. And that void is still there. And that wound is still there. And that question is still there. I've watched people literally walk around almost like zombies because they don't know where to go. They don't know what to do. And they're so broken inside. That word is brokenhearted. It's, it means a heart that is shattered. It means a heart that once beat in a normal process has been taken and either ripped apart or slammed to the ground and destroyed and shattered. God wants you to know. He knows what you're feeling. And those are real emotions. But even in that, he wants to bring health to you so that that emotion, come on now, doesn't have to hurt anymore. You're never going to forget the rejection. You're never going to forget what somebody had done. You're never going to forget, but it doesn't have to hurt anymore. Are you with me? See, rejection is so powerful. Because again, look what it does. It's a real person. And really, that's probably more real in some of your lives than many of you would ever want to admit. You don't walk around with a little block wall on you. But it's been a long time since you've allowed anybody to get close enough or would allow anybody to touch your heart. And I just want you to know, you don't have to live that way any longer. That Jesus has a way to heal your broken heart. That Jesus has a reason. And the reason is, is because he needs you to love people. He needs you to share his love. He needs you to become vulnerable. He needs you to be a person that's willing to go out and get hurt. I'm not telling you you're not going to get hurt again. I'm going to teach you how and what to do when you do get hurt again. Because every time you love, you become, come on now, every time you love, you become, and every time you become vulnerable, it is inevitable. Come on now, I can't hear you. Every time you love, you, come on now, work with me together. Every time you love, you become, every time you become vulnerable, it is inevitable. You're going to get hurt. And every time you get hurt, you've got to forgive or you cannot love again. It is so easy to stop the cycle and to build your wall. And Jesus just wants you to know that you are losing because you're unable to receive love and you're unable to give love. This is not God's plan for your life. This is a smart ploy of the enemy. The more Christians he can get like this, the less, the less lives that are going to be changed. Because the only person that a person like that deals with is themselves. They only survive. Did you hear that word? They only survive. Say that with me. They only survive. They do not live. It's good preaching, isn't it? Well, thank you, young man. I appreciate that. I do not feel rejection from this young man. I have known many people that have been wounded by their parents. 
You know one thing, uh, is, is I, I'm going to try to put this skit together for next week. It's called Ugly Louise. I used to do it when I was on the drama team when I traveled for my Bible college in, in, in Rhode Island. And it's about a girl in a classroom setting that is dressed in not hip clothes, that's for sure. She's got an old ragged hat on, and her name is Louise, and she's not altogether pretty. And everybody in the classroom just starts beating her down and tearing her up. Everybody starts making fun of her and telling her she's a loser. Some of you know what I'm talking about. I remember one night, a man walked up to me. He was in his 60s. And he said to me, he said, you know what? That's me. That's me. And you know what's amazing? Even though he was in his 60s, he was still carrying that wound of rejection for all those years. It doesn't matter how old you are. It doesn't matter if it happened when you were a child. It doesn't matter if mom and dad, my wife and I know a, a young man, and, and uh, he was talking to us when he was probably in his early 20s. And today he's about 40 years old. But I remember when he was telling us what his parents said to him. His mom and dad looked him in the eyes and said, we never wanted you. You are worthless. We wish you had never been born. And they weren't kidding. And this young man carried that. And today, he still carries that. Some of your parents abandoned you. Some of your moms and your dads walked out on you. That feeling of rejection has to be dealt with. Or else that wound is still there, even though you've covered it up. Some of you have been rejected by your friends. Peer groups are amazing. I have teenagers, and one thing I hear is, well, you know, uh, and, and they, you're this, or that group, or that person over there. Look at that person. They're a loser. Look at that person. And they tear them down. It's amazing. Come on, now, how many of you remember when you were in high school, you had all the groups? We had the jocks. We had the heads. They were the drug addicts. You know, we had the whores. They were the girls who ran around with anything. We had all these different peer groups. And you know what's amazing is you usually compare yourself to other people. And what is really amazing is that everybody wants to do two things, be loved and accepted. So you know what people will do? They'll actually change their entire principle of life to be part of some group that will accept them. Because nobody wants to feel the sting of rejection. Well, you know, that's the teenagers of the age. Oh, no, I'm telling you right now, it's not just the teenagers of the age. It's the adults of the age. There are so many adults that do what they do because they want to belong too. They'll trade their walk with God to do something. They'll trade their relationship with their husband or wife to be something. Why? Because they want some group to accept them. They want someone to love them. They want someone to care about them. Adults deal with peer pressure just as much as teenagers. Because everybody wants two things in life. They want to be loved and they want to be accepted. Some people have been rejected by their spouses. Where their spouse turns on them. I know a man after 28 years of marriage, his wife just said, it's over. I heard it's one of the greatest weight loss programs in the world. I don't ever want to try it. My wife said amen. But here we are, folks. Some people have lost loved ones. And the wound of rejection is so powerful. 